experiences from doing stand-up. And I thought, let's put this in a format where people who want the life-changing experience can get it through comedy. And that's how Stand Up for Mental Health started. Well, firstly, you would have to have people who are willing to admit they have a mental illness. Definitely. And I know it's just another lousy disease. It yeah. really is. Yeah. But there still is a stigma. Totally. Around mental illness. Yes. Mm. Yes, definitely. Uh, and even for myself, you know, I, I, so I've been seeing a psychiatrist for years, and there were times I would catch myself saying to my wife, and even though, I mean, of course she knows, and it's, I would say, I'm off to my therapist now, because I couldn't say the word psychiatrist, because that mm -hmm. means I'm really crazy. But if it's a therapist, that was okay. It's better, or a psychologist yeah. sounds better than psychiatrist. I yeah. don't know why. And I just, I would just. How about sort shrink? Of, yeah, sort of choke that word. I'm off to my psychiatrist. And mm -hmm. so e even, even, like I say, even though I consider myself fairly non-stigmatized, it was still hard for me to say the word, I'm off to see my psychiatrist. I, I, I used to have to force myself to say, no, no, I'm not going to downplay it. I am seeing a psychiatrist today mm -hmm. so I can get my meds adjusted. Not, we're not doing therapy. We're doing medications right doing now. Doing medications. <laughs> we're doing and drugs. Well, <laughs> did you, did you uh, stay on your meds? most of the time or because I know I have a everybody has a family member oh, totally uh, I think uh, who has issues and uh, staying on medication mm -hmm. is not an easy thing well, especially I'm, I'm, I'm totally compliant I, 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 I sort of when I realized how good it made me feel and I, by good mm. I should mean I should say normal mm. um, I'm, I'm completely compliant I don't go off of it I uh, um, yeah, I comply to the letter. Mm -hmm. Because the psychiatrist, I assume, says to you, you have a chemical imbalance exactly. in your body, and we and we need to fix that. Exactly, and and I know how much better I feel because occasionally my meds stop working, and then we have to mm -hmm. find another combination. And I know how bad I feel when they're not working, and how and what a difference it makes when I'm on them. So I have no desire if I have to take them for the rest of my life. I'm totally mm -hmm. fine with well, that. Well, I come from a family of manic depressives, and some can deal with it totally with orthomolecular medicine yeah. and mega vitamins and running and jogging, yeah. and others can't. Yeah. There's a fine line, I'm sure. Yeah. It, it is what it is. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So, uh, there's a fine line, I'm sure, between punchlines and pain. Yes. Yes. Um, and I would say what we do in Stand Up for Mental Health is we take, we take that pain from the past and we turn it into punchlines. Uh, I know Carol Burnett says there's a, what does she say, something about comedy equals tragedy plus yes. time. Yes. So uh, obviously there are certain things that may be too raw to talk about now in the present. But usually, I, I tell people, the more screwed up you are, the more dysfunctional you are, the better your act is going to be. So the more, you know, people, oh, really? Really? Oh, well, that's, <laughs> that's good great. news. And then they start to, oh, yeah, I remember that time I, you know, I maxed mm -hmm. out my Visa cards or when I thought I was Jesus fighting mm -hmm. Satan. And they go, this is going to make great comedy. And so it really reframes it from something that was horrible and shameful to you take it and you turn it into something. And all of a sudden it makes people laugh. And you feel a lot better because now you're in control of your story, mm -hmm. whereas before your story controlled you. Uh, do you get criticism for making light of mental health issues I, and not that you do it yeah. but when you make fun of something some some critics would say oh you shouldn't go there well I think possibly before people see our shows they mm -hmm. might think that but um, it's people talking about their own experiences so we're not making fun of oh you know those morons those crazy you know it's like yeah. I went He's through hooped, the, I'm not yeah yeah well mm -hmm. it's like, you know but I'm basically saying you know this is what I went through and here's my experience so so it's um, yeah people people own their own stuff they're not uh, it, it's not like one group making fun of another mm -hmm. group how have you seen people uh, use stand-up comedy to build their self-confidence to uh, deal with fear to turn fear into excitement, their fears, their self-doubt, into things they can deal with. What have you seen? Well, put it this way. Um, I've seen people, uh, well, let me give you an example. Uh, so we've been working with this group of, of, of sex trade workers through an organization called PACE, mm -hmm. Prostitution Alternatives Counseling and Education. And when we first started the course, they were um, really tentative, really afraid, really really thinking that they wouldn't be able to succeed. Well, we did a practice show last Friday night, 
and they did great. And, and, and on Sunday when they came into class, it's like they were laughing, they were happy, they were boisterous, mm. they had some swagger back in their life. And so it was a complete, um, it, it was though they went from believing that they couldn't do something to believing that they could, and also realizing that I can do stand-up comedy, I can do a lot of other things too. You know, once you've done stand-up comedy, you can, you can go for a job interview, you can whatever mm -hmm. you want to do. And it was, I, I was just really struck by how it's like they were, they were animated, they were alive, and they were looking forward to more, because we're doing a big show on, on Thursday at the, um, um, at the Fire Hall Theater, but they were looking forward to something where they felt like they were going to succeed. And I think that's what, that's what it gives people, is that sense of, I can do this mm -hmm. when you've been told all your life oh you can't do this you know you're screwed up sure yeah. so how is a uh, performance different by them than by uh, a Ron James I mean I know Ron well and yeah he could be a well <laughs> don't tell him no he's a wonderful guy but or yeah. a Bill Cosby or yeah. you know a, a, a new heart a, a stand-up comic we know and somebody who's dealing with mental illness, how is their performance different? I think what's or different, is it? I, well, I think what's different is, from the point of view of the audience, is they're seeing good comedy, but they're also, they're, there's also a level of inspiration. Like, when you go see Ron James, say, mm -hmm. you just expect him to be good because sure. he's a professional. Mm -hmm. um, whereas these folks, it's like, you're not too sure what you're going to get, and when you get something that's really good, you're part of their journey of overcoming. So it's very inspiring to see people like just people like you who have taken this course, who've got up there and who have faced their fear and who have accomplished something really amazing. Um, so it's, it's, it's also very moving as well as being very I'm funny. Sure. Whereas when you go see Ron James, you're not, you're, not there f you're, not, you're not there for that. You're just there to laugh and you, know, you certainly get that. Mm -hmm. But it's, it's a different, so we're not just doing comedy. We're, we're doing, we're inspiring people. And how reliable is someone who is dealing with mental illness or depression or uh, other issues uh, showing up, being able to perform? Well, I, I, I'm so glad you said that because when I first started the course, I asked some people in mental health, what do you think about, and they were, oh, you know, you're dealing with mentally ill people, they're never going to show up, they're, you know, they're not reliable, you only get one or two shows of them. I can't get rid of these people. I mean, you know, once they do a show, they're, they're hooked. I mean, I, I have groups across Canada, right? And um, there will be groups that I haven't had contact with for like a year and a half because we haven't had any funding in that mm -hmm. city. And all of a sudden we'll get a show and I'll email them, you know, hey, we've got a show. You know, within the, by the end of the day I have you know, emails from everyone saying, great, when's the show? When are we rehearsing? I can't wait. When's the next show after that? Mm -hmm. So um, what I realize is that when you give someone something they want to do, they will do almost anything to make it happen. And I think one of the reasons we see people with mental illness as unreliable is a lot of the options we give them, we wouldn't want ourselves. Right. You know, like we say, hey, take this course and you too can work graveyard mm -hmm. shifts at 7-Eleven. And then we wonder why people don't show up. Well, you know mm -hmm. something? I don't think I'd show up for that course. Well, that's, <laughs> well, that's the thing. Uh, but dignity, you know, give them dignity. Mm -hmm. And uh, whenever you do perform well, you feel good yeah. about yourself. Oh, yeah. I, if you sing, if you dance, if you create art, and it's fabulous. It's, it's a high. It's a great, it's a, high. It's a chemical high. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, an old Sufi mystic said, trust the universe, but tie your camel. Right. Rumi, I believe. <laughs> Rumi. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. So, uh, yeah, and, and, and also I think it's, um, it's really exciting for them. So we have this initiative where we're going to campuses across Canada and into the United States, and we take our comics in and we perform. We have Stand Up for Mental Health Days on campus. And so here they, they are, they're, they're, they're getting, it's like they're, they're acclaimed for what they're doing. People are looking forward to seeing them perform. And it's like we turn them into stars, and that's just a wonderful feeling to, to mm -hmm. go from that person that everyone avoids to all of a sudden people want your autograph and stuff like that. I mean. And so much of who we are is what we get beamed back at us. And when all of a sudden you go from being ignored to people coming up to you and saying, oh, you're great, you were hilarious, I loved your show, all of a sudden you start to believe that you may be that person. Mm -hmm. Exactly. <laughs> uh, cracking up. Yes. Uh, is this available for the public? Yeah, if, uh, if people go to our website, uh, standupformentalhealth.com, there's a link to the producer's website, and you can buy it from the producers for, I don't know, it's not very mm -hmm. much money. But these are your stand-up comics, if yes. I can call them yours. Yes, they, performing. They, they, the, the documentary makers followed um, us for a whole year in 2005. And actually the documentary won a voice award, which is an award given out by the U.S. government to documentaries that portray 
um, people with mental illness in a respectful, honest fashion. And so it's a, it's a fabulous documentary, and it's very inspiring. And you'll have a fundraiser. I think it's a fundraiser. It's just a benefit. Memorial mm -hmm. uh, Comedy Benefit, Yale Hotel. Love Yale the Hotel. Yale. Yes. Uh, Wednesday. Yes. At 7. And uh, Pace Comedy Debut, Fire Hall Arts Center, Thursday, June 24th. That's right. Nice to see you again. Thanks for having me. You're my favorite happy neurotic. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye.